So welcome to this week's public lecture. Let me begin, as always, by acknowledging our sponsors. Uh, we couldn't do this whole public lecture in particular, but the class as well, without the help of our sponsors. Um, Jose Andres Think Food and Alicia, uh, an organization in Barcelona, have been instrumental both in financial sponsorship and also in intellectual uh, help with the whole course. Um, our labs, we have labs with the course, and Whole Foods has donated all the food that we do in our experiments. This, of course, is a wonderful course because you get to eat your experiment when you're done. Um, and Cole Palmer has uh, provided a lot of the equipment uh, that we've used. Le Creuset has helped, as has Mars Chocolate and Asada, have all been instrumental and helpful in the support of this uh, course, and in particular, the public lectures. And um, the Office of the Faculty Development and Diversity has let us put this whole thing together. So, as always with the public lectures, I get to uh, bore you as the uh, preliminary act for what we're waiting for by re-summarizing and, and reviewing very briefly what we discussed in the science part of the class uh, last week. And actually, it's very appropriate because um, what we discussed was really mouthfeel, but we were talking about viscosity and elasticity, and we're going to hear very much uh, about that in tonight's lecture as well. So this is sort of a scientific review of what we talked about, but it also will serve as a good introduction for uh, what we'll hear uh, tonight. So I'm going to talk fast. You can ask questions if you must, but I'm going to try and summarize a lot of the science that we discussed in an hour and a half in just 10 minutes. Um, this was the summary of what we had. Basically, we were discussing both viscosity and elasticity of a material. Viscosity tells you something about how things flow. It tells you why water and fat or oils are different in the way they flow. And elasticity is uh, why things have a firm, a solid-like feel. And both of these are absolutely essential um, in terms of uh, uh, the way they taste, the way they, the texture the food has in your mouth, and in terms of the way you cook, it's, it, it's very important in terms of what you actually do. And we did experiments in class to try and demonstrate this. Um, as always, we had an equation of the week, but last week we were really lucky we had two equations of the week. And you're not allowed, oh, good, good, good. You're learning, you're learning, but this is the review. You get to clap when we introduce them. And guess what? You get to clap twice. Oh, that's exciting. And we cook fruit gelées. Um, and, well, I had to admit, when we started, I had to admit that we're really talking about what seems like boring physics at first. A spring. We introduce what a spring is. And everybody who took freshman physics should remember that a spring is just something that you stretch. And if you put a force on, the force is just proportional to how much you stretch it. You stretch it twice as far, you get twice as much force. That is the way we measure elasticity. And that's really all we need to know about measuring elasticity. This is called Hooke's Law. And so we said, well, a spring, let's measure something about food. And so we measured the spring constant, or in fact, what we call for materials purpose, the elastic constant of a steak. Uh, this uh, is a steak we took off uh, uh, an image from Google, but really this is a cooked steak. We started, because we want to talk about cooking, we started with a rare steak, an uncooked steak. A steak. And we measured uh, the elasticity, but Michael was a little worried because he, like many people, doesn't eat meat. I eat meat, obviously. He doesn't. So he said, don't worry, tofu is also an elastic material. It also has an elastic concept. We could measure the elasticity of tofu. We didn't. We just measured the elasticity of a steak. Um, <laughs> so remember, this is important. This is really important, that all foods, or almost all foods, I'm going to give you a counterexample of this, but almost all foods are soft and squishy. And, um, that's really what we're talking about, soft and squishy materials. Um, in principle, one of the things I think that surprised uh, both Michael and I when we really started to sort out and try to explain this 
is that in principle, you think everything is well understood. We realized that we really couldn't explain everything, at least in very simple picture, we couldn't explain everything, because in fact, it's still a big topic of research, why there is elasticity, why there is viscosity, what causes the elasticity and viscosity of some of the materials is still the subject of research. So we're trying to summarize not only things that are known, but also things that people are still trying to understand. So, we can't tell you about everything, but we're trying to try and, try and give you as simple as picture as possible. So we measured the elasticity of a stake, and we found that the stake in units, the units that you measure, the elasticity is in uh, units of pressure. And we actually measured the stake. We had something that pushed down. We measured the force. We, made, we did a real experiment, and we could see that the stake, uh, an uncooked state, had an elasticity of 8,000 pascals. Remember that number, I'm going to come back to that, because what do you do with a steak? You cook it. So we did cook it, and I'm going to show you what happens when we cook it. Okay, so then we said, well, look, a steak is something that really is soft and squishy, but not all materials are soft and squishy, and even things that are food are not soft and squishy. And one thing we had talked about before was a piece of ice. And ice is clearly much more rigid, much harder than a steak, but we still tried to measure the elasticity of that, and the way we did it was actually to crack a piece of ice. So we actually had a lot of problems with it because ice is also slippery, and it kept slipping out of the thing they were trying to crack, but eventually we cracked it, and we measured, or we estimated what the elasticity is, and it's something like 2 times 10 to the 8th Pascal. Who remembers what a steak is? 8,000, 2 times 10 to the 8th, is a lot, a lot more, okay? So it's much harder, it's much more elastic, and you, tell, you can tell that, you can tell that exactly, because think of biting down on a piece of steak, and think of biting down on a piece of ice. Ooh, ice is cold, but it's also really hard, and that's what we measured. Um, then we tried to understand something about the really fundamental origin of what it means to have uh, an elastic constant, and I won't go through the details, but basically what we tried to do is we tried to stretch all the bonds. We did this with a simulation of a piece of ice. This is a simulation of water. It's solved. We tried to stretch all the bonds, and we showed that really the elastic constant is an amazing uh, uh, quantity. It just is essentially an energy. This is thermal energy, and we talked about that in the first lecture, divided by the size of the molecule, the distance between the molecules cubed, the volume of the molecules. This is the equation of the week. <laughs> and this is an amazing material. It just says that the elastic constant is an energy density. It's the energy of the bonds times their density. And so it's just the energy density. And the physics of this, the reason for this is really what you're trying to do is you're trying to pull the material apart. You're trying to stretch the material. You're trying to pull it apart. You're taking all those bonds and you're pulling them. Each bond has an energy and you have a certain number of bonds. You have a density of bonds. The more the density, the higher the elasticity. Okay, so that's elasticity. Um, but then we said, look, ice. You can melt ice and you get water, and that's completely different. Water flows. Water is a fluid. A fluid has a viscosity, and you'd think that it's totally different, and in some sense it is uh, totally different. And physically, what viscosity reflects is just the motion of the individual molecules in the fluid, how easy it is to move one across the other. And so here, tonight, we're going to learn all about olive oil. We, in fact, compared olive oil and water, and we showed that it takes longer for the molecules to move across uh, the olive oil, so the, it's more viscous. The viscosity is, is, is larger. We measured that by just passing them through a funnel and showing that the uh, given amount of olive oil took a longer time to flow through a funnel than did water. And we then introduced a new equation that said something that really we can think of the viscosity as a certain speed that the molecules move times the, times the length that they have to move. The length is just the length of the molecules. And so what do we get? We get a new equation for viscosity and... <laughs> One more time, please. We have two equations. So we have two equations. 
This is the equation for viscosity. This is the equation for a liquid. And this is the equation for a solid. Um, and OK, we thought about the different ways of thinking about the viscosity. What's that? <laughs> Michael doesn't like all my equations. So then we said, look, there's a way of thinking of unifying this. Remember, if you think about water, water we think of as liquid because our molecules flow one over the other. But if we take water in our simulation and we take a snapshot, we look at a very, very, very short time, you can't tell the difference between that water and a solid. Ice. So you can also think of viscosity as being an elasticity times some relaxation time. And this at first sight seems a bit strange. How can you think of something that's a fluid that's also a solid? And just to show you that you can think of it, we found this uh, uh, YouTube movie. Has, who's seen this YouTube movie? OK, who's not seen this? OK, guys, I'm going to show it to you just a part of it. But please, look it up. It's so funny. It's so much fun. So I'll play this if it plays. OK, this is a bath, a huge bath of cornstarch. You know what cornstarch is. It's fluid. It's fluid, right? OK, hold on. These, these are challenges. This is in Spanish. I wish I could play it in, in the, the sound, but never mind. You can look it up and you can play it. OK, watch these guys. No, it's OK. Watch these. OK, there he goes. Whoa, walking on water, walking on water. That's what's happening. He's walking on water because at short enough times, at short enough times, the water, the water with cornstarch, it really is just water with cornstarch is acting like a solid. I'm not going to play this whole movie through. We don't have time because I want to get on to Carlos. But <laughs> eventually, please do look it up because eventually he doesn't walk fast enough. And guess what happens if he doesn't walk fast enough? He sinks. It is water. So this is a fun movie. It shows my point. We can go, oh. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can cheer for the movie of the week. But you know what? We don't get a movie every week. We get the equation every week. We got to go back to our equations. Oh, boring, boring, boring. OK, so Michael says I have to finish. The important thing is that we can look at this time. From that, we can uh, get something about the temperature dependency. Heat up olive oil. It flows more quickly. Um, but then we said, well, look, we're going to have a steak, so we better make some gravy for the steak. And the cool thing about gravy is that we can take a very small amount of thickener, and we're going to see something about some gelatin here. A small amount of thickener can increase the viscosity enormously. You add just really a few percent of a, a, a polymer, and it, adds the, it increases the viscosity a huge amount. And so we, we pointed out that you find these thickeners everywhere. Xanthan gum is found throughout. And the reason is to understand that we went all the way to making the solid. We made a gel. We made some jello and we measured its elastic constant and we found it was something like a thousand pascals. We measured exactly the same way as we did the steak. And to understand that, we said, well, we can think of what's happening inside the, the liquid as the polymer are all these long, sort of spaghetti like molecules that are joined together. And we can understand that the, the nature of these things, we can understand the nature of the, uh, the places where they're joined together just by calculating, using our formula to calculate the length scale. And when we calculate, because it's such a soft material, we found that the length between these bonds is something like 16 nanometers, much, much larger than the size of, say, a water molecule. So it's a much larger length scale, a much softer material. And then we can understand, we can uh, understand why also this makes things much more viscous, because if it's viscous, these bonds are no longer permanent. And you can think of these molecules like spaghetti molecules. They have to wind their way through this very tortuous network. But eventually they do that and they relax. And so we can calculate an elasticity and a relaxation time. And from that, we can get a viscosity. And we can see clearly if you increase the concentration of these things, it takes longer to relax. The elasticity goes up. The viscosity goes up. That's why you get a very large viscosity with a very small number of molecules. Finally, we went back and we actually cooked the steak to show that what happens with when we cook the steak. We measure the elasticity before and after. We found after we cooked it, it become, became what? Much tougher. OK? In fact, we cooked steaks when we did the experiment. We cooked steaks both rare and well done. Well done was a lot tougher than the rare and a lot tougher than the raw steak. And we measured the elasticity. You can see that it increases rather substantially from 8,000 to essentially 50,000. 
And uh, from that, we can calculate the characteristic length scale. We actually also measured the volume. We showed that it lost some water, so it shrunk somewhat. But that was not sufficient to account for why it became so much more elastic. So we realized the elasticity also meant that you form new bonds in the gel that essentially makes up the steak. We did some other experiments with cornstarch, but I won't tell you about that. Instead, let me now uh, introduce Carlos Tejedor, and he's going to tell you much more exciting things about viscosity and olive oil. OK. Uh, I don't know what I need to do, because uh, I speak everything. So walking to the swimming pool of a full of the start, you know, because it's Spain, that one. So <laughs> I think so. I don't need to do nothing more. So. Uh, when, when the first time he sent me one year ago, he sent me, I make a viscosity here in Harvard. I say, I'm really exciting because I, I'm really, I understand because I'm really a chef, yeah? Uh, but it was amazing because he sent me, uh, you need to speak about the rheology, no? And I say, what? Rheology? Please, if you don't change the word, I don't understand what happened, you know? <laughs> so for this one, uh, the thinking like uh, rheumatology, I think so I need to speak about uh, bones, you know? And he said, no, sure, no, it's not bones, no? When I speak with uh, Alicia, it's a uh, scientific people, and I say me, uh, you need to speak about the viscosity. And I say, okay, I understand now. So I can to explain something about the viscosity. Uh, which, the, which the product is uh, viscosity? I think so, it's olive oil is the viscosity for excellence. Uh, olive oil is a product, uh, Catalan, Italian, Spanish, there are a lot, but in Catalan it's very famous, and you use, you lose, you use in uh, all the recipes, because I think so, it's a luxury product that are in all the stores in Spain. Yeah. Here, I think so, no, there are too many, but I hope so in the future there are more. Okay, uh, I want to speak, a little of uh, the, the videos of uh, I speak today. First, I want to say uh, thank you to Harvard and Alicia and all the people because the staff and all the people is, is, is great and uh, I'm really comfortable to stay here. Uh, but, you know, uh, for a stay here is very important my team. My team is in uh, Barcelona, is working now, and for this, uh, thank you for them because uh, I'm here and then I stay working and I want to give. <laughs> Uh, two minutes and all my team because I think so is like a, is a pressure for my team and I want to show you for two minutes uh, what is a Via Veneto, uh, what is my team, the philosophy, organization and uh, just two minutes, okay? Lydia. He's missing the song but I don't sing, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, it's Barcelona. Uh, I think that one is a Via Veneto. It's a traditional, popular restaurant. Uh, Via Veneto was uh, 45 years old of the history. Have uh, one star Michelin for, uh, for 41 years. And uh, that year gave me uh, the third star of uh, the soul. Dali is coming a lot of time when he's still alive. Uh, and now we are changing some things. Uh, that is the kitchen, some plates, so I make it in the restaurant, Mr. Monge. And that one, we make it uh, some plates, uh, some things. It's a traditional, you know, but I think so for today, the new things is uh, I speak with a, a lot of uh, a new, I don't know, designers, uh, philosophers, uh, science, uh, because we, we learn a lot of everyone, you know, technology. We make a lot of uh, class, the practice class of uh, f f formage, uh, cheese, uh, wines, uh, hams, and all the products. It's very important to know all, all, all the products, what they can do with uh, everything is product, because every product is different, and you need to look in for which technique is better for a show. I had some cheese, okay. I think so. It's easy, is it? <laughs> the problem is no music, so I need to play some things. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Don't sing me, eh? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Monge. I 
I don't bring ham, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, that, that just is for, uh, I give uh, thank you my team because uh, he have a, a hard job and uh, every day I have 24 chefs with me, 25 outside, the, the bar and the kitchen porter and everyone. So I give, uh, so really thank you all of them. Okay. Uh, now I start just a little to the show, yeah? There are one glass, everyone have, and uh, I want to, uh, to have a, a good experience now. For me, it's very important you smell, yeah? It's olive oil, okay? It's really easy. But normally, the, the people when think about olive oil is viscosity. Uh, it's a condiment. It's for make vinaigrettes, uh, dressings, or something like that. But today, I give you something for it. Yeah? Why? Because I think so, all the techniques we use today or in use in the future, uh, you, we looking for uh, new sensations in the, in the feeling to the persons. So the emotions is very important. So if you touch the gelatin, you see it's not very gelatin too hard, so it's very soft, yeah? Normally, if you put it in the mouth and you take it, it's really soft. And the sugar is really nice. There are some citric inside, and it's a really nice uh, the experience uh, for me. I don't know, maybe some one will not like it, you know. <laughs> but the people always thinking about don't eat, and you eat one cube per person with sugar. So always bit like a fat uh, is uh, really um, heavy, and it's it's not heavy, is it? So. All the news techniques always is for a surprise to the client or the customer. Yeah. Uh, today I want to make a, a different or a similitude of a gastronomy and viscosity. So viscosity is olive oil, and I want to explain what is the tree of the olive oil and the start to the gastronomy and the olive oil. So I want to explain just with uh, some images as well of the, that I don't know that parallelism. Parallelism. Yeah, yeah. Easy. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you that, okay? The second one? Uh, 30 seconds. Uh, seconds? Don't worry about it. I'm singing now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I hope so I'm singing because it's eight minutes. So, <laughs> no, I, I think so. When I arrive here, I, I'm really amazing because this morning I stay, I will to stay, uh, I will to stay uh, a lot of lamps. And, uh, it was amazing, and uh, I'm looking for a new, th or I find it, a new things. I'm sure when I arrive in my a restaurant, my chef maybe is a little crazy because, because I want to change a lot of things because uh, bubbles, drops, and uh, really amazing, yeah? Okay, you start now? 30 seconds, i give you 45. <laughs> ah, it's okay. It's very important you understand what, what uh, I want to transmit to of, of, of you about the, the gastronomy and olive oil as well.
you need to understand what is the gastronomy and ask culture. That olive tree have uh, 2,000 years, and uh, it was amazing, but every year give uh, a new fruit, so that one is like a gastronomy, it's a history. We, we find a new techniques, and uh, we find everything, but that one is a uh, olive tree, it's amazing. Yeah? But it's the similar of uh, gastronomy, it's amazing because they are traditional, and they are, now it's in, uh, innovation, new techniques, and. Is the, for me, it's the same one because the essential of the olive oil is the inspiration for all the chefs. And uh, for make the new things, always you need to know what is the traditional ones. And uh, now I show you as well some place for inspiration and traditional for us, no? So for it is a traditional, it's a tomato, onion, and garlic. And uh, you use a lot, a lot of that recipe in, in all the recipes because it's a flavor, the Catalan one, you know. But the, the flavor, I think so, is the, the fire to the wood. I don't bring as well so fresh it, so. The creativity, you can find it wherever you stay. I don't know, maybe uh, with the wines, uh, maybe with the bees, uh, in the lab as well. So you can find it, but just, just well to do a, a way to do it. Eh? The culture is very important for uh, new things. That one is a typical traditional plate. All this one is feeling very easy, you know? But that one is, is a culture, is a product. Deep fry. Easy. Eh? But that one is a technique as well. Everyone is technique. But now, a lot of people understand what happened when deep fry it. So now the people ask it always everything. What deep fry, why is more crisp, uh, why what they are more water, like uh, I don't know that a lot of fish have a lot of water when we deep fry exploded. So you need to look for always some things, uh, the traditional techniques. Beach, really nice. The weather like here that day, respect. It's very important to respect all the recipes and the techniques as well because I think so. The people in the inside in the mind always remember. It's not like a ratatouille, yeah. Remember about everything. So it's very very, very important all that one. I'm flying, shining, raw. It's like a, you know. Some people say maybe it's not a technique. Yeah, it's a technique because uh, the olive oil is in the tree. So there are some process of that olive oil. Traditional place like uh, bread and tomato. It's feeling always feeling easy. But if I show you that one, it's really nice. That is a traditional one. I think so. A lot of people try that it's tomato with bread, olive oil, salt, and what I put there. I don't know, in the Bay of Cada case, nice place. So anchovies, really nice, eh? I don't bring as well. So. <laughs> you, eat, you eat everything, so. <laughs> but the passion and dedication, that's one way. Yeah. And another place for inspiration, Alicia. It's like uh, hardware, you know? Viscosity.
I don't use that one in my kitchen, eh? Just, uh, just for show. I'm surprised here because show me all that that machine, you know, and this was wow. <laughs> I want one of my kitchen of that. I don't know why they use but you know. <laughs> yeah, I writing that. <laughs> and sote. It's easy, is it? But that one I think so is is Barcelona, you know. Always speak about the olive tree, the history, the olive, the essence, the liquid gold, no golden or uh, liquid, you know. Products, fry, calamari. Easy. But all that points is very important for as as kitchen and innovation because if we know all that one, it's more easy than other things. If we don't know all that one, we don't understand the future. Okay, now, now I give you uh, some of that. It's a, it's a present from, from Spain. It's a, that leaves of that tree, I bring you for each of one of them, of the, of them you know? Because I think so, it's a history. I, I bring history. I don't bring just olive oil. I bring a lot of uh, life for me. And uh, that one is a product uh, I show you, you know? That, I waiting, everyone have that one. Inside there, uh, one leaf is real. It's not plastic ones. <laughs> so, if it's a plastic one, maybe I mistake it, you know. The tree is in the front of the, that target. It's a, it's a tree of that one as well, but there are a lot of words. It's a fashion, gastronomy, and a olive oil and viscosity. But the first word you see is alive, because always everyone stay alive. And the kitchen is stay alive, because if you don't stay alive, you can do nothing. You don't understand nothing. And uh, when I, today, uh, I, I say before, when I stay in the labs, uh, was really amazing because I find a new techniques and a new flavors, flavors as well. So some, some people say, "My lab, you, you find some flavor, you make it crazy, you know." But I'm not crazy. I, I find something. So always you find. I don't know when walking to a harbor. Now it's, ra it's raining. It's wet. So. The smell is very intensive. So when the people is coming to the restaurant, if you can show or, or if you can transmit all that one, you sure you win the play. And uh, that one I think so uh, is important. You know? Okay, today I want to make one recipe here. It's no nitrogen liquids. It's no smokes. And uh, you know, it's normal. But it's very difficult because I think so. When I speak about the viscosity, uh, I say, okay, which one is more difficult for make another viscosity? And I say, olive oil, okay? So, it's a problem, because with uh, water, it's very easy to make a viscosity. But the viscosity and viscosity, it's, it's not working. Yeah? Uh, speak on this. Say, I don't know, I micro. Working now? Okay. So what he's trying to say is that like olive oil is hydrophobic. For those that you don't know what hydrophobic means is that it doesn't like water. So many of the thickeners that are known today in cooking are hydrophilic. So actually they, it's very easy to thicken water or products that are related to water, but it's very difficult to thicken anything that is hydrophobic like oil. Okay, I understand. <laughs> okay, I, we see that one, viscosity. You see the hair, so it's like alive, still alive, because it's still alive. Because you sure the next year give another leaves, I don't bring you because maybe kill me somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there are respect, flavors, viscosity, harbor. Because thank, 
thanks to olive oil, I come to Harvard. So I need to speak. <laughs> oh, thank you, olive tree. Thank you so much. <laughs> Trad <laughs> Traditional culture, sensibility, and history. Yeah? Uh, that one. For this one, it's very important. When, when I make something the new one, I need to speak with another section sometimes. That one, when I speak with uh, one designer, one, uh, design, designer? Designer. designer, yeah, I speak what I want to do, and him is uh, help me for I make that one. Because we need to speak the same language. OK, no re reology, no, viscosity for me. Later, you need to speak me, what is the reology? But now you need to say me what is viscosity because if I don't understand what is viscosity, I don't understand what is rheology. So, and that one the same is the same place. Okay. Now I make that first, like it's the, the gelatin you try. Yeah. Here there are just sugar, glucose, and water, and that's it. And olive oil. When you're looking for a, a new textures, uh, always working with a, we put a lot of the bean, the other one is true. So it's very important, know everything. What is the gelatin, what is olive oil, what is water, which sugar you need for make that one, because for this one, uh, olive oil, and olive oil is, is not working. So you need to look for some things is working. The texture you take in your mouth, so it's just olive oil. If I put water and olive oil and put in the blazer, sure emulsionated. So that one is a different one. I don't want emulsionate. I want another texture because the emulsionate is put air inside it. So it, I think so for me it's more easy. It's more difficult that one you try now because the, the feeling to you see, it, I, I don't have now anyone because all this is sugar, but the, the texture inside is really the, the color is, is, is oil. So I'm looking for that one, for that extras. And uh, now it's like, uh, you know, for the, for the babies. <laughs> na, na, na. That one is uh, leaves of gelatin. I put with uh, ice for it hydrated. Normally it's uh, dry and now it's like that. Protein. Yeah, that one I know. Always ask it about everything, the, which sugar I use it, which water. Always is water with uh, uh, the bottle of water because I control the calcic and uh, potassic and everything. So some people say, anyway, you take whatever water. No, no. Always you need to see the water, the gelatin, the olive oil as well. I use another olive oil. No, olive oil. Good ones. I think so, the best ones because the flavor, you change it as well. The, the new thing is now is always speak with uh, scientifics and uh, help me too much because, yeah, yeah, it's true because we don't make equations and uh, all that one because we don't understand. Well, but when I have a problem, listen, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you make a question and you say me what I need to do, yeah? <laughs> because I think so, it's not my job, you know? It's like you need to do uh, olive oil, no. Olive oil, you need to make another play, another people, you know, process. And I want to best. If I can do the best one, I do it. If I don't can do it, don't do it. So sure, there are a lot of people do it better than me. So I take it. It's not funny, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> that one is really easy. But the first time I remember, oh my goodness, I have a lot of problems <laughs> because put the blazer is really uh, emulsionated. So when I put it here, I say, oh my goodness, it's horrible, that one. Maybe the test it is nice, but it's horrible. And physics like, say, OK, I need to speak a scientific, and uh, what happened? <laughs> and he say me, you need to put that one at 80 grades.
10 years ago in the kitchen, it's not thermometers. Now, <laughs> everyone have a thermometer like a bully, <laughs> like a pen, you know? Okay. And keep it here for just one minute for solution of the sugars. Always looking for the, the best texture and the best uh, psychology to the, when you see, yeah? I want to look, in, I want you to, to see that one, that color. So emotionated, the first one. Why I'm emulsionated now? I'm emulsionated now because it's no protein inside it. If it's no protein inside, it's not emulsionated. It just is mixed. So the first time I do, I do like that. And then put gelatin inside. Oh my goodness, it was horrible, really promise. So it was like a butter, yeah? The, the texture was a, like a butter and I say, I don't want that one, I don't know. So for the chefs, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to try. I think so, I think so now, the creativity, you need to mistake. Every, every day you need to mistake. Because if you don't mistake, you don't find nothing new. So you need to, I don't know. Okay, mayonnaise, lactonese, and that's it. The recipes, no, no, you need to try. Because if I don't try that, sure, the first day I put in the bin, and I'll try never more. Texture, you, you see that? Now I put in that. Very dry. And by, by one. And be careful not to it too much. Sometimes the problem is well to the temperature. If the temperature I put the olive oil very cold, and that one is a protein, I emulsionate it like that one, is jellification too much, too much quicker. And then the, the color is changing as well. So always you need to work maybe a 40, 50 grades. So I put there 80, 90 grades, olives, olive oil. And then just the last day we tried something's really nice in Alicia. I, I, I made that one with a um, agar agar, and then when go down to a temperature, I put in the vacuum machine, I stop it, and keep it there, and go out. It's like a bread. It was amazing. So it's a mistake. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Always that. I always know. Okay, you see. You see, it's olive oil. Not separated. The color, the color is very, very, very important. So I keep that one here, and maybe when I finish, you can try. But it's the same gelatin you tried. That gelatin I, I made that, that morning, and you try now. So it's the same one of that. Okay. Okay. For for this one, I say you. Is it, when you see that one, is you say, oh, it's really easy, okay. But what I need to do for a, a ride here is a, a lot of work behind of mine, a lot of work of a people thinking about what I need to do. So now I want to show you another one of the recipes and I explain different viscosities, one with flour, one with starch, one with gelatin, one with chantana. And I, I hope so you understand a little of uh, more olive oil and viscosity, okay? The first recipe, I want to show you Mr. Monge, is the proprietor of uh, Via Veneto, and it's not coming here because I have a lot of work. And uh, the first recipe, he make a stick tartar. It's an emulsion between two balls of glass. So it's an emulsion to the front to the customer. It's a traditional plate. You see the balls with the eyes, yeah? Put the egg yolk, salt, pepper. I make the big nugget emulsion in front to the customer. So that one is evolution. Some people say, oh, okay, but really easy as well, yeah. But it's evolution because thinking about two balls between the eyes and make emulsion. Really, very really nice emulsion. You see that? You see the color? The texture is unbelievable. I don't bring it as well. <laughs> I take it my fly, so we finish up. Okay, now start the last ones. Soft creamy jelly. Soft creamy jelly is a is semi iota, 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 iota. It's carrageen. It's a sea, sea bit, sea bit, sea bit, sea bit. It's from Ireland. Water. That that is that technique is very 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 difficult. But feeling very easy, but really really I promise is very very difficult. Because if you emulsion too much. It's broken all the particulars, so you need to put like in the point. So you remember tomato, and you see the texture. Wow! <laughs> Bread and tomato and ham, so really easy as well, sir. Eh? Water, but you can use, I use normally the tomato water. The tomato liquidated and take out all the water. So the gelatin is feeling like a tomato and oil. It's really, really nice. That gummy is, is very difficult as well. You don't try in your house because sure don't work in. <laughs> but in a restaurant you can do it because uh, it's really, really nice. Maybe chantana, maybe sugar, glucose. Ah, santangam, santangam. Next 
nice texture, eh? So, Baroma, the Dagonese one machine, is a big temperature. It's boiling. You see? Olive oil. It's like a gelatin, but it's... You see? It's, it, that one is amazing for testing. It's, it's green. It's very, very difficult. That one is a starch, corn starch, corn starch. And you keep that down one week, and then take out, and it's like that one. But the inside is feeling like a toffee. It's great. Uh, very difficult. <laughs> Bechamel sauce, okay. When I tried that, uh, I said, normally my grandma make uh, bechamel sauce with the almonds. And I say, put uh, the flour, almond flour, and I say, why I can use maybe uh, almond oil, oil, almonds, the flavor, the, the product, you know, the praline and the essence. So I don't use butter, just I use olive oil and olive of nuts and in that, that place make a rouge, it's a traditional one, is just flour and a olive oil, and then they put milk for cannabis. Salt, pepper. So that one is another viscosity for the flour. So I change it, the texture. Okay, that is not the the texture or the color is not like olive oil, but here I don't looking for that one. I was kept, I'm looking for another viscosity. You see the texture? My grandma don't believe me about <laughs> you make a bechamel with uh, olive oil. He said, you need a butter and sure, no, I don't need butter. <laughs> you see the texture like, <laughs> like, and a cannelloni is a, is a plate. We make it a cannelloni with a bechamel. Just for a picture. So it's a traditional dish, really easy, but I think so you need to look for always with the new techniques for finding something new. And uh, the texture of uh, that bechamel for me is, is great. That is a uh, olive oil uh, dressing, uh, dressing, olive oil dressing, isn't it? Cannelloni. Uh, that one is very funny. <laughs> it's a, I make two blades here. Uh, that one is a cut. I put with the olive oil, garlic. Lauren, Lauren. Come. Bay. Bay leaf, bay leaf. Thank you. <laughs> and that one is a glycerin. Glycerin, is it? Glycerol. Glycerol is an accent. Glycerol. So I take temperature, put between two glasses with the ice, and I make a mayonnaise. But the flavor is the, the cot, because I confide it to the cot, yeah, you see? You see? The texture is, is, is great, and the taste is amazing. You see the, the, pot, the leaves of that one? So, I don't bring it well, though. <laughs> so, oh, mm, ah, ah. And 
I use the water there in the bottom to the gelatin to the cut, and I use for make another plate I show you now. You see? So just olive. Yeah. And now with the, with the water, I make a peel peel olive oil jelly texture. That, that is a new plate of that year. I make a gazpacho with a gelatin of cod. I use olive oil and a water of uh, cod. Uh, chan, gan, gan chantama? Chantana gam. Chantana, chantana gam. It sounds like a forest gam. Eh? <laughs> so you, if you see that, wait. It's not a miracle, it's true, eh? <laughs> you see, now, now you see nice texture. Ah, uh, you see now? It's really great. So the texture when you, you feel it in your mouth is, is amazing. Put that, you see? I put in the mold, yeah, that one. Easy, eh? I think so that one, not that, that plate, but thinking about another plate with the textures, new textures, is, is great because you see. And when you put it in the mouth, it's feeling like a, a nice cut. There is gelatin, like, because it's the gelatin to the cut. Yeah, you see? And now I make a plate. Take the tomato, the head of the tomato. That one is, the flavor is amazing, it's better than, it's, I think so, it's the best gelatin in the world, that one. And it's tomato. So, try, take a tomato and take the, the seeds and try that. Cut. Olive oil, tomato. And that one is a escachada, it's a plate famous in, in Catalonia but uh, a new one. The interpretation is very important because if you remember the first video, traditional uh, cooking is nice, traditionals, uh, always you, you need to fill in a new, a new ones, yeah? See to that. Ah, dumplings. I remember that, that play was <laughs> very difficult because uh, I stay in one classic restaurant and uh, the first time I've been to uh, Hong Kong, show me the dumplings and I say, wow, it's amazing, yeah? And I started to make that one. It's water, corn starch, tapioca starch. I need to put the water warm because it would cold. You see the video before. I don't know walking in the bottom, in the, in the, in the bowl, but, but the texture of that one is because it's warm. I need to work too much, very quickly. It's warm, eh? Like a samurai, eh? <laughs> Hong Kong dumplings. You see? Viscosity. It's no olive oil here, eh? The olive oil is in the end. Prongs. So when I, I did that, that one, I remember I say, okay, the people like it, the ravioli. Why I don't try to make a ravioli like a dim sum? Because the, the people understand, all, uh, Mr. Monge, me, and all the team want to go to the future. Uh, we don't always ravioli like that, you know? We try that, it's a uh, prawns, the head to the prawns, uh, onion, and 
chives. So that one is a duo. That chip is a little slow, yeah. <laughs> See, neck, neck, palm, and always. He say me when when Chinese people show me, show me that one. Always have a nine plex like that. I show you nine. Each one, so the people take it five, and uh, maybe a hundred persons take a dim sum. So <laughs> I need five people for make a dim sum. Steam it. Steam it. Forty-seven. Forty-one. Five minutes. And the people of my restaurant understand that plate. And I uh, was really scared the first time I tried one customer that plate because I think some maybe don't like it because the filling in your mouth is different of the ravioli because it's like a more soft uh, mocoso. Like jelly. It's for the mocos. Lime, um, that is a plate of uh, sofregit, the Catalan sauce in the bottom, dumplings of uh, prawns, and the plums really grow. It's a really nice. <laughs> And that one I showed you before is the jelly one. The sugar, glucose. Ninety grades, emulsionated. You see the texture. One by one. You see, it's, uh, it's great the color. You're feeling like a uh, olive oil. It's sticky. You see, that one is a revolution. Sugar. And the jelly. And the last one, and the last one is uh, fried. So, because I want to show you, when I stay to the beach, I show you what I deep fry. We make that one, it's a lorito. It's a, a fish from a maresma. That is a patata souffle. It's a traditional as well, but it's amazing. The technique is amazing. Because it's a, a porita, two temperatures of olive oil, and you put a 140 degrees, uh, degrees. Degrees, is it? 140 degrees, and when infiltrate it to the to the oil inside to the potato, put in another one with a 180. So then you have a reaction, and it's like a. So you you see when the the potatoes in the box when they are boiled, and you say maybe it's mistaken that one. So we make it. <laughs> you see that. It's empty inside, and the deep fry of the loritos. So it's a traditional, I don't know, 
but for me it's not traditional. Sure, when the people try that, maybe feeling better. And that one is uh, everything is here. Okay, for, for the last one, as I, I say thank you for, for everything. I hope so. I enjoy to the lecture. And uh, if somebody have any questions, uh, I stay here for any questions. Ah, I have a, a talker, a gift. Uh, in the car I give you, there are a smile out in the back. Some of them. A smile face. I have a books for each one because I don't have theoried books, so <laughs> it's like a lottery, you know. <laughs> so when I finish, he's coming here, I, I give you the, the, the book from Mibia Veneto. So, I hope so you enjoy of everything, so and you have any questions, I stay here for, for everything. So we have some time for some questions. We have microphones. Easy, easy questions, huh? Yeah, not hard questions. There's a microphone behind you. I had a question about virgins and extra virgins and uh, how the relationship between uh, this idea of uh, virgin olive oil that we have and extra, extra virgin olive oil. and. Uh, if those processes had something to do with thickness or thin, and, and then how you decide that an olive oil is good in terms of how it's processed. Yeah. So. Uh, the real, the really the extra virgin is the, is the best one, you know. It's the first process have uh, olive oil, and the virgin is the second one. It's a little more, more viscosity. The extra virgin is more viscosity. But sometimes there are a grades of uh, uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.5. That one is, is the acid, acid to the olives. So there are some machine take it for, uh, for the acids. I normally use, I don't know, for, uh, I think so, I, I remember, is uh, virgin, I use for deep fry, for me. A lot of people say, oh, why you use that one? Because it's very expensive. But in my restaurant, always with a virgin, no extra virgin. Extra virgin is better raw, because all that that uh, olives, uh, olives oil, is better don't take a lot of temperature, because it changes it to the molecular one, and it's different to the tested. It's more liquid as well, as see before. So the extra virgin is, is the best one, more viscosity, is better make uh, some for dressing, or you see that, that temperature, I showed you before, like uh, bread and tomato and, and ham, that the temperature just is, uh, I think so, 25 or 30 degrees, so it's not bad for the olive oil. When you take a temperature, you take another, another olive, uh, olive oil. Um, if I were interested in trying to make the bechamel sauce at home, do you have any tips? <laughs> Ah, tips, ah, so algún truc, algún truc. A lot of passion, <laughs> a lot of love. Uh, now, uh, when, when I, I, I make the bechamel, always, normally I, I, I use, uh, if you don't want to use olive oil because it's more expensive and you want to use butter because always use butter, always is the, the same height, hey, the, the apes. Well, the weight. weight, the same weight, uh, butter and flour. Ah, uh, yeah, the olive oil. I use the same as well, but no, there are water. So normally the butter have some uh, uh, lactic ones. So there are two of them: the fat and lactic ones. But when you put make a bechamel, really don't care because later you put uh, milk. But with the olive oil, I use noa. No olive oil, but nuts, uh, hazelnuts, is the, for the flavor is amazing. So if you try with a different olive oil or olive of the the dry fruits, 
uh, it's better off to use that one. It's 30 grams of each for a liter of, uh, of milk. So it's boiling, toast it a little of uh, flour, and then just put uh, milk and whisk. And if you want to put some things, uh, cheese, you can put cheese and passion as well. <laughs> <laughs> Bienvenidos. Um, I wanted to hear about the anti-inflammatory properties of olive oil. I'm thinking of the recent discovery of oleocanthal. And also, I want to know if Harvard is going to take you to some of our great Boston restaurants. And if so, where are you going to go? Thank you. <laughs> Venga, vamos allá. Antioxidants. You say me is half uh, antioxidants. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I, I speak with uh, one uh, nutritionist, uh, nutri and she say me, a lot of people say me, uh, ah, I want to try uh, uh, gir girasol, uh, sunflower. sunflower oil, because it's more light. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> it's more fat. <laughs> because the olive oil, it, for the, for the, of course, herb. Yeah, is 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 the best one we can use. I don't, technicum, I, I don't know. I'm really sorry. You use a lot of different techniques, you know, for obtaining different viscosities of the olive oil, like the temperature and the timing and the ratio. Are these very specific to this particular olive oil, or if you have an olive oil from another part of, you know, Spain or even Italian, would you have to use exactly very different these things of techniques, or it's applicable to all different kinds of? No, How I, general is it? Always I use extra virgin for make that one. Mm -hmm. I really don't care from where. Okay, okay. It's more important that it's got to be extra virgin. Yeah, that, extra virgin that's more because important than when I see you before, uh, it's the best for testing right. and for uh, flavors as well because the, the flavor, it changes everything because, you know, you eat that gelatin. If the olive oil is not very good, you really don't like it. So it's like, uh, you know, sunflower oil. <laughs> I like sunflower oil, <laughs> so maybe I'll, I use it. So, if a uh, few pressings is better than many pressings for olive oil, presumably no pressings is best, have you ever had olive oil extracted with supercritical carbon dioxide? And if so, what does it taste like? Uh, yes. <laughs> I try, but at the moment, it's not working. <laughs> I, I want to try. Yeah, I, I see you. I see you. Um, I remember before the summer, I stay with a, a lot of people take uh, olives oil, and uh, a lot of uh, farm people, yeah, and the, the people they stay in the, in the farms, and I say, okay, I have a problem. I go to Harbor, yeah? And they say to me, wow, Harbor? <laughs> I say, yeah, I go to Harbor, I need to speak about the olive oil. But I want one machine for I make one drop, because here I like a lot of drops, yeah? Like make one drop of olive oil. And say, oh, that one is impossible, da, da, da. Say, I want it. i sure I can do it because I see a lot of things never, sure I, 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 I don't, sure don't make it before. So now I can do it. So when you say me, you can do it, and I say, okay, I can do it. Sure, the next year I can do it. One olive oil for each and try one machine and for make one drop of olive oil. And sure is the, the best olive oil you try in your life because you put olive oil, the people see when he make it the olive oil. The olive oil is very difficult to make it because uh, I need to put olive oil in, inside to the water, go to the, the, the bat, the, the, the flavors bat go down, and the, the good one go up. So one drop is very difficult. So you need to take some water and change it. And with five kilos of uh, olive oil, you make a uh, half liter of uh, olive oil. So. It's very, very difficult, but I try one and half it, I show you. <laughs> Thank you. You have a balance between the age of the olive oil and the oxidation that happens. It loses its flavor over time. 
So how do you find the right balance between having the best olive oil or the freshest olive oil? Which, which do you go for? Uh, I, I say uh, before, uh, for me it's more important to the temperature. Uh, I try a lot of olive oils and uh, when take a high temperature, the flavor is it's good, but it's not really good. So for make some gelatins or something like this, the temperature it's no go up to the 50 grades. So maybe between 25 and 35 is the best ones because all the flavors is take it. If you have a glass and you take it in your hands uh, sometime and you take a flavor, it's better now, better than before. So always want to have a little of temperature, the olive oil have a lot of explain all the flavors and the texture is different as well. So it's a little more liquid about the flavors and the nutritional is, is really nice, all the process. Do you want to show us what happened to this? <laughs> With that, let's thank Carlos. Thank you so much. Excellent. Right?